All right, guys, so um, the good news is we're ahead of the curve. Um, it's only the end of week eight, and we can pretty much skip all of week nine. Good job. Right. You should give yourselves a, a round of applause, right? You guys totally rocked it. <laughs> all right, we got two claps. That was great. Um, so anyway, that's more than I usually get. Um, so anyway, our next assignment is actually going to be starting module four, which I think you guys are going to get uh, a lot out of. It is going to be quite demanding. I'll preface this a little bit, but the good thing is we get an extra week to do it. Um, and then if you guys crush this one, then you'll get an extra week to make your projects for design look really, really good. Yeah, meaning like if you do this one in three weeks, which would be awesome. Um, we'll see how the pace is going. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm going to give you guys ample work time during class to kind of keep it going because part of this is going to be a little bit of a design charrette. I think that part of it you'll find challenging, but I also think the, the sort of representation edge that we're injecting into this exercise you'll find quite rewarding. So if any of that sounds good, well, you don't really have a choice, you're doing it. <laughs> so. Uh, so let's talk about this. I'm calling this a binary conceptual representation. Okay, so that means we're taking a very binary concept and we're going to represent it. So it's quite literal in that regard. Um, so what do I mean by binary? Who can tell me what binary means? Nobody? What's that? Two. Two, yeah, two, right? So it's like zero and one is binary. It's what everything is programmed off of. Um, so so basically what the and, and usually they are they are opposites right they form a, a sort of juxtaposed relationship to one another um, but it doesn't have to be you know it can just be two things that are different or or uh, you know two birds of a feather that are slightly different um, that kind of thing so uh, basically it's any relationship between two things so uh, the conceptual diagram this is our phase one this is what we're going to do today we're going to do it in pairs you guys will be working in pairs if you'd like um, and uh, so we're going to start off by sketching some, some conceptual diagrams, okay? And the, the challenge, I think, is, is doing this on a blank canvas. And I think, for the most part, our class has been pretty good at this. Not all classes are. Um, but it's really difficult, I think, to just come up with a concept out of nowhere. So I'll try to give you a few examples as we talk through this. But um, essentially, I, you guys have full freedom, and I don't want you to take it too far, OK? Keep it simple, right? This is not the time to get overly ambitious. This is the time to practice simplicity. So um, you're going to get in groups of two, and you're going to sketch out some concepts. Um, I, you all went up and grabbed two sheets of paper. Um, so you're going to have to come up with four separate concepts, um, diagrams. Okay, but I don't want you to draw on your sheets until you have your four diagrams. And then you're going to use your sheets to just draw out what the diagram is and turn them in. Um, so uh, they're going to be binary design concepts, and they're going to relate to this site condition that you see down here. So I mentioned Qbert. Um, let me just kind of show you my, my ancient um, reference real quick. Once you see it, I think you guys might actually recognize it, um, that you've played it before. That's Qbert. Oh. Yeah, you played it before, right? A few of us probably have, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah super addicting game. Super awesome game. Um, but anyway, so we're doing something sort of similar to Qbert, right? This is our landscape that you see at the bottom of the sheet. Um, what we're going to be doing, maybe I shouldn't even preface this before you guys do your diagrams, but what we're going to be doing is is basically building something that climbs this landscape. Okay, complete with stairs and space. All right. Um, so. Each one of them is 24 feet tall, and you're going to have two floors per block, so per rise. Um, so first off, I think it's, it's sensible to note that, um, that this isn't going to necessarily be very easy, right? It's a lot of space that you're going to be designing, but you're going to keep the space uh, less detailed. You're going to focus on structure and enclosure, or structure and skin, or structure and cladding. Okay, that's basically what we're going to be doing. Uh, but that's why it needs to be binary, because you're going to focus on point, line, and plane to, to generate this, this condition. Okay, 
in whatever point line and plane your diagram says it's going to be. And then uh, that's, that's phase two, but phase three is gonna be representing it. So we're gonna get to a point within, I think about a week and a half. So today and then all of next week, we'll be working on just getting the architecture up and going. And then we're gonna start focusing on representation. So we're gonna start storyboarding where and how we're gonna represent this thing. Um, there's one very technical requirement I'll have and walk you through. Um, and then there are two sort of um, creative ones. That, and that's the full and the detail one that we're gonna talk through and, and really develop, okay? Um, so at a high level, before we get into um, diagramming, what questions do you have? All right, yet again, no questions. I don't know if I'm proud or concerned. Um, okay, so uh, let's stop the video intro for the assignment and then we'll talk through some of the diagramming stuff um, before I release you guys to pair up into teams. Um, when you pick your teammate, make sure it's somebody that you can stand for a couple weeks because you are gonna be working with them throughout the entirety of this assignment. I would also urge you to pick somebody who you don't always pick if you happen to share classes um, in other classes because and this is just you know me getting up on a soapbox you always want to pick diverse partners because you're not learning anything from picking the same partner all the time okay pick people who you haven't worked with before that you know maybe there could be some friction or something like that challenge yourself to work with different people different personalities so you learn different lessons about design from different perspectives understood all right, cool. So let's pause and uh, get talking then.